Hello. I just thought I'd show you on this machine, which is a Benina 550, and other machines will vary a little bit, but how to do a buttonhole to suit a button. You may be making a bag or something, and I just thought it would be helpful. So I've actually got some um, just cotton fabric with a little bit of uh, thin wadding in there to show you that you can do it through that. I've got my buttonhole foot that comes with this machine, and it's got a little slidey thing that allows you to set your button sizes, and you'll also need your little um, buttonhole cutter or seam ripper to cut the buttonhole. So if you haven't done a buttonhole before and you've got a different machine you might want to look through your manual and have a look. But on, on this one, as I said, it's the Benina 550. Um, I can just go in and select my home, click across to my buttonhole picture, select that, and then I've actually gone into number 53 on this machine. All it is is a regular buttonhole it's got the bar tack at, at each end and the two little bits either side. Normal buttonhole that you would see on a shirt or something like that. And I'm going to click on that. And then on my foot here, this is the button I'm going to make a buttonhole for. This is You can set the machine up so that you can do repeat buttonholes the same size. So you set it on the first one, or perhaps on a practice one. And, and you can use other measuring techniques, but I tend to just use this manual system there's a little tiny red marker um, in the foot just back down here where there's a zero on this little, there's little markings along the metal strip here. So you line up the one edge of your button with that, the zero or the red marker, and this little pointer here you line up so that the button fits within that space. And then I'm going to pop that foot on here. Now you might want to do that lining up when it's already on the machine so that you don't knock it out of place. Um, or you can do it beforehand, like I just did. Um, I tend to like to take my thread down, so I'm just going to to do that, because that's the way I like to do it, and I'm making a mess of that, so that my thread is through the foot. Then I'm going to take this to the machine. So this, this first one I'm doing is setting the length so that I can do more buttonholes the same size. So I put it in. I might have made a little mark where I want to put my first buttonhole, but... As I said, I probably would do it as a practice for a first one anyway, so that wouldn't matter so much. And then I'm just going to start stitching. It does a little lock stitch, and then it does a zigzag up one side of the buttonhole. And then I will manually stop it when I've got to where I want to go. And this little red marker will line up with that little pointer there. So I've stopped there, and now I'm going to press my little return button. And then I put my foot down on the pedal again, and it does a little backward thing, does a bar at the end, and it comes up the other side. And it knows automatically then where to put that bar and finish off at that end. And there we have very delicious looking buttonhole and we can just check that that's right before we do any more so you can see there that it's just a regular looking buttonhole um, you can have a quick look and see it's looking about right for our button with your little seam ripper or buttonhole cutter you want to pop the end in right up near that little bit that goes across the end there and you want to poke it right through between your between your stitching and that little red point on the end there helps give you a little bit of a guide and you can just slide that along it's actually cutting your fabric between your stitching now don't go all the way to the far end turn it round pop it back in at this end again otherwise you've run into danger of cutting those threads that go across the end of the buttonhole so there we've got our buttonhole we can see if the button works in it and yes it does we might just want to trim off any little loose threads that occur because that tends to happen and we're away so now we can just go back to the machine and do more so you might have posi you might want to two or three buttonholes the same size you might want to make a little mark where you want to start your buttonhole pop that in your machine foot down foot on the presser foot and then just let it go. It will do the whole button for you, hole for you now, the right size. And there we 
we've got our second buttonhole, just the same as our first one. So it's going to remember that for as long as you leave that set up. So you might just want to do put buttons on everything now that you know how to do that. Again, I'm going to pop that pointer in between the rows of stitching at the end there, slide it along, turn it round, pop it in at this end, and there we have our next buttonhole with our button fitting in it beautifully. Touch tight because I probably didn't cut to the end. But it's that it's that simple to do your buttonholes. Don't be frightened of buttonholes. Your manual on your sewing machine will tell you all those sorts of things that you need to know. Um, because they're so useful when you want to put a button on. You need often a hole to put it in. So that was just to show you how to do um, a buttonhole like that. Particularly on the Benina 550, but to give you some idea that it's possible on pretty much any machine that's got the zigzag and the buttonhole feature. Thank you.